Okay, here we go. Spark RDD, the second sub lecture in the uh, Apache Spark lecture series. And here we are, Jeffrey Fox, trying to give this lecture. Let's go. We have here it uh, repeated again because this is the uh, the uh, divider we have in the actual original PowerPoint. And this will just give a brief discussion of RDDs, which you will soon realize are basically databases. All right. So uh, the Spark is built around the concept of transforming RDDs. And um, that is, again, comes from the database background of the of people who develop Spark. It is not obviously a needed approach to a big data programming model because a lot of what you have is not going to be stored in an RDD. So, but it is very good, in my opinion, to be able to support databases. So, what Spark does here is something going to be a subset of what we want to do in the rest of the, in the ultimate uh, world we're going to live in. So, a key thing that Spark supports is transformations. We'll see something similar called actions later on, where transformations take one RDD. Remember, RDDs cannot be changed. If you want to do anything, we have to produce a new one. So we take, uh, create a new one from an existing one. And you can actually make more than one RDD in a transformation. And in fact, whenever you do a transformation, by definition, a new RDD is created, because you don't actually record the answer. It's either going to be what's called a value, which has nothing to do with RDDs. It's the thing you get, it's the answer you want, like the word counts or something like that. But in general, an RDD is going to be produced every every time when you do a transformation, and you're going to hook various transformations together to produce the final answer. Now, this uh, set of RDD transformations is called a lineage. Remember, we talked about a timeline servers in Hadoop. This is a sort of related to that. When you when you're doing um, some complex computing. And then you get an answer. It is very important to be able to know how that answer was gotten. And that's what the lineage does. It records how you got whatever you did. And it's called either an operator graph or a data flow graph or a dependency graph. And it's the graph of transformations. And as I pointed out, our, our Spark considers the world built up as data flow. And, um, one interesting feature of Spark is that the data flow is dynamic. Then you can actually have actions that change uh, the transformations at the particular stage in the data flow. And so this uh, directed async clip map or graph is the execution plan. It is, a, it is dynamic. Flink is actually static, so Flink can do lots of optimizations. But again, that comes probably from a different world from what most people live in. Uh, the dynamic one is more likely to be the natural one for people to use. Um, so you start with RDDs, which are not dependent on anything, and you end up with an RDD that is dependent on all the previous RDDs. And then you just, uh, it's very really straightforward to, to know what the lineage graph is. You just have to record the executions that you run on Spark. And, uh, you can set the log, prop, log lineage property to be true, and it will give you a lineage graph after the execution of a, an action. The action is running the job, because the action is the final output. Now we have narrow transformations, or wide transformation. Wide transformations produce multiple RDDs. Here we have pictures of narrow transformations. Three blues become three blues, three reds, three reds, three greens, three greens. And here we have a mixture where the reds, blues, and greens are sort of mixed up in some peculiar fashion. So that's a wide transformation. All right, so RDD has these operations or transformations, and they are Classic database operations. Now here, we again use the technical database definition of map. A map is a function applied to every element of the RDD. Um, a 
flat map is related to maths, can produce more complex answers. Filters is a more general thing, like clustering or something like that, I believe, might be a filter. Because you're running a complex algorithm where the final RDD is not simply related to the original one. Here, the final RDD is like the original one with just a function applied to each element. Uh, we have to do these things with partitions because we want to run in parallel. Another standard database concept is a union. You have um, multiple RDDs, you join the answers together to produce a single RDD. An intersection, which is the finds out the, what's in common between RDDs. Distinct, finds out what's distinct in RDDs and creates a new RDD of the distinct um, um, answers. Finally, join is a standard database concept, which is uh, outer or inner join, and that's applied to a data set. All right, as well as transformations, we have actions, and an action produces values. And I've already mentioned the example, uh, which is given later in this thing of a count. When I'm doing a word count, uh, the word, the well, I'm getting numbers, which I want to actually, if I'm, say, doing Google search, the, uh, the word count is uh, an act, produced by an action that produces data that could be displayed to the user. So it's an operator on an RDD that produces a non-RDD value. And actions are only um, invoked when they're needed. And that's, that, that implies some synchronization to which um, Spark can take tr keep track of. So here are some actions, count, collect, take, top, count by value, reduce, fold, aggregate for each. Standard um, global operations. And here we just reiterate the difference between transformations and actions. Transformations. Work on one RDD or multiple RDDs and go a new RDD. Actions start with RDDs and produce answers. Which answers are just values, which are then gets handed off to do something else with, such as producing a web page for you. Um, here's another picture of this, and this is, says exactly the same thing. It mentions particular actions again, like counting. Um, we want to count all the occurrences of car in the RDD, and that will give you an answer, a value. And uh, sum and things like that. And uh, whereas RDDs take an object stored in an RDD, which is an in-memory database, and produces a new RDD, where some transformation is being applied to the elements of the original one. So here is a little more detail. Um, of these uh, different um, transformations here. Uh, we have map, flat map, and reduce by key. And these are just the standard, simple well, map is really simple. Um, you just have a function where you pass the elements of your original data set through a function, which is an answer. The, string, the set of those answers is a new RDD. Um, in the case of a flat map, you can have rather than one element, one source element generates one output element. You can have one source element to generate zero or more output items. So here we have the um, key value pair, which we know is, key. is a very important concept in MapReduce, because so many things can be thought of usefully as key value pairs. And here we have one of the key value pair transformations. Filter. So filter is actually, in, 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 I gave a rather extreme example of filter, but generally it's just by um, having a function which um, filters the original data set by telling you which elements there are some um, test is true and which elements some test is false. And here we have the map uh, with partitions. And with map partitions with index gives you a flag to tell you which partition produced the answer.
Okay, now we come to a set of actions, reduce, collect, and count, which are defined here. Uh, reduction is a standard aggregation, which you have to define a function which is commutative associated, like the plus function. That's the standard one used for taking averages or totals or histograms and things like that. But otherwise, you can do minimum and maximum and multiply. And they just have to, they have to have this property if only because that without that property, you can't com compute them in parallel properly. Because it's not so trivial to c compute things in parallel when they do not, they're not commutative and associative. Um, here we are collecting the elements of a data set as an array at the driver program. And it's, this is only particularly useful if we have a relatively small number of elements. Maybe this is what you do for your search, the results of your search. Count, we were of course seen many times with word count. So that's clear why that comes along. Um, here, we, here we come now to another important property and the last in this uh, slide set, which is RDD persistence. And we need to know when to take the in-memory and persist it. And um, we have persistent cache methods. Caching, of course, means you keep the data in in memory when possible. Um, we can uh, remove the RDD from the disk by an unpersist. And um, we have various storage models, pure memory and memory and disk. And the latter is going to be the one you have to use for any significantly large data set. So this is, um, I think, a pretty important um, technology. And it's likely to occur in different fashions in other um, programming environments for big data. Okay, that's the end of uh, this particular uh, um, slide set.